Hi everyone, it's me Kathleen and I'm back again live from Destin, Florida uh, with another live painting demonstration. It is a beautiful day here in Destin. The beaches have just reopened this last weekend. I haven't gone, uh, but I have developed a nice habit during the last six weeks of getting outside a lot and enjoying the fresh air. I started by walking and then I started running, but then my knees said, no, you shouldn't do that. So yesterday I started biking and, and I continued, I will continue this habit, I know, um, after uh, we are all um, allowed to leave our houses, which is kind of now, everything is kind of getting back into, um, get, get back going uh, again here, here in Northwest Florida. Um, I was curious to find out uh, what habits you all have uh, started the last six weeks that you might continue as well now that we're easing back into uh, life. Um, I'm not going to look now, but I will, I will check it out later and get back to you. Um, and there are a few more changes for me and I shared, I shared one with um, my email members yesterday and it's a big one. Um, I'm totally turning my business model upside down and it's a direct result of what's going on and our time together here each Monday, the last, I guess this is the fifth week, right? Um, when I first opened my studio in Santa Rosa Beach called Chroma, I was pretty confident that I could pay the rent each month by giving in-person classes and even if I didn't sell any work that month um, I would still have a cool place to paint every day and I could share my love of painting with everybody with, with these classes right so that's been working out pretty good the last few years and now we're not going to have any more in-person classes at least through the end of the year and so maybe no more studio I'm not sure um, but the good news is that we've been meeting each week and you have kept me creatively challenged and I've been wanting to provide good content for you and it's been a, a really good uh, working experience for me uh, and I think we should continue. So on that note, I want to say that I am creating uh, fiercely creating a uh, group that we can continue to teach and, and share and learn in. And, um, you know, I've been working on this beginner's class for the last year that I thought was a beginner's class, but it's really about my whole painting process and um, how I became a better artist. And so I think that would be really helpful to you. So that is what I am considering combining with these in uh, these live demos or tape demos or things like that uh, with this knowledge and I hope to share that with you in this new group and I am going to tell you about it next Monday. Uh, I'm working out all the little details but it's it's really exciting so um, I hope you will join me next next Monday to hear more about it. Uh, on a technical note, Justin Broderick is joining me um, remotely today. He's there in the comments with you, but he is actually in Nashville, Tennessee. And he's going to be starting uh, an adventure in organic gardening this summer. And I'm so excited for him. Um, but do not worry. He is going to continue to be there as a business advisor and as a participant in our group. And I want to thank him for that and all the help he's given me up to, up to now. And I miss you. Do not, he's not sitting next to me today. Um, so, all right, let's get to work and talk about our cow today. We have, and I'm not sure what kind of cow this is, if anybody knows. Uh, it's a brown cow, I know that. And, and so, but you know, you know, we can make him any, any color. He doesn't have to be brown. Um, and you should have your color 
photo and your black and white photo. Um, and let's let's look at let's kind of look and see what we see in this photo <clears throat> to start with. That's that's going to help us. And uh, I'm looking at the dark areas, so I see the darkest areas under the ears and in the eyes, the nostrils. <clears throat> maybe under the under the lip a little bit and so there are not a lot of dark areas really dark dark areas but those will be our darkest when we're painting <clears throat> then the middle values are kind of like in the background here um, and underneath the body on the sides of the face and underneath the horns but the lightest light is very close to that middle value, isn't it? And so if this were a more perfect reference photo for me, I would have very strong light coming onto the cow, showing very clear shadows and light areas. And that's how I like to generally paint. So this will be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll bump up these, these lighter areas and make them even more light so that we can truly have um, more of a, a, a three stronger values in our painting. All right. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm using today, as usual. Uh, I've got two brushes, and they're both uh, flats or brights. And the difference is that a flat is longer in length than a bright. And this one is even angled a little bit. Um, I like I like to paint with flat brushes and then I've got my favorite golden uh, fluid acrylics and this one is quinacrino magenta and this one is naphthol red I have manganese blue and ultramarine blue I have Hansa yellow and my favorite Indian yellow. But I'm gonna, I have a couple of outliers in there too. I have my um, phthalo green, which I really like, and um, just gotta be careful with it as usual. And my transparent red oxide, which is kind of like a burnt sienna, if you, if you have that. But this is transparent, and I really like that part of it. And I'm going to also be trying something new today. Um, wow, crazy hair. And um, it's the Golden Open uh, acrylic, and it is a slow drying acrylic. And um, we've been, one of the challenges that has come up in the past painting sessions is blending, right? Is that the, the acrylics dry so quickly that it's hard to get that nice soft edge when you want it. Um, it's easy to get those nice hard edges, but we don't want all hard edges all the time in a painting. Sometimes it looks pretty cool. I think with our rooster, we had a lot of nice hard edges. But then with the um, last week, what did we do last week? Um, we had a lot of softer edges and I'm is blanking it's all running together right now but I'm gonna try this um, open which and look I'm just opening it uh -huh. and uh, we're gonna see how that works and I'm gonna test it out and let you know uh, what I think um, of keeping it keep, it'll keep the painting a little wetter so that we can work into it a little and I know you don't have this but um, We'll kind of be doing a little, um, I'll get, be giving my impression of it so that if you want to, if you, if that's something that you desire in your work, um, you can try this as well. I also have a uh, gesso, white gesso for my white. And maybe you have titanium white and that's fine too. So let me put my gloves on. I'm a messy painter. And I will turn the camera and we'll get going. And you know what? I, I, I meant to do a test and say, Justin, are you there? Are you there? Uh, here. Hey, he's there. Oh.
All right. I wonder if everyone can hear me. Uh, can you hear Justin? I hear you. All right, and, and let me know if uh, we're looking good here, because I can't really see the canvas in here with all of the great comments running through. Sure, and I, that's why I usually slip them to the side uh, so that you can see the whole Oh, oh, I did it. Yes, thank you. Boy, that would have been terrible. Okay, uh, my cow. Oh, good, good, good. It's just like he's here, right? What do we do with our black and white? Or what do I do with my black and white? I use it as a value study. We've already talked about the, the values in it, and I'm gonna fold it in half, both ways, and find that center, and I already squirted out some uh, transparent red oxide and Indian yellow in my plate. Now I'm going to find the middle. And um, I can kind of see my lines. And I, I'm not going to draw on here today because I don't want to, I don't want to draw, um, draw over some of these nice details that I'm going to be looking at closely um, around the cow's eyes. And I'm going to put that to the side. And I've got an 8x8 eight eight gallery wrapped canvas that we're going to stick on here real good. Hopefully it won't fall down. Um, I get these at, at uh, Blick Art Supply. They are uh, premium quality, which is a nice heavy canvas. The level threes at Michael's are very similar, and I like both of those. So I have my transparent oxide red, and I have my Indian yellow, and I'm making a very watery, watercolor-ish mix together to find my center. Oops. Let's see how I did. Measure it on each side. And a little bit, a um, little bit to the left. And up and down. Good. And I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw the, the quadrants on here, because that'll be really helpful. And I, I want them to be super light. So it's not uh, too distracting when I'm painting. Kind of wipe them out a little bit. There. To get a nice light horizontal and vertical axis. And then I'm going to look at uh, my cow and I'm going to start kind of in the middle because that's always easiest for me. And I see what I'm noticing is that uh, the middle of the cow's or the middle of the, the photo is not in the middle of the cow's face, which is a good thing. It's slightly to the left, right? So I'm going to um, kind of like try to mark off a little bit where I think the where I think the edges are. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Yeah, because it would be helpful for you to see what I'm pointing at, right? How's that? There we go. 
Okay. So this is a really important part of the painting process because you are getting your uh, your shapes, you're looking at your lines and your shapes and getting that proportion correct. And I'm going to kind of just make a little top mark where I think the top might be. This is going to change as we go along and, and start comparing lines and shapes. And uh, this might be not quite as far as I've got it. I've got a really teeny canvas, um, which is very similar to the size actually of the photograph as well. And then I'm going to draw in that ear, which the bottom comes right on the line. So that's a really good indicator there. And then we've got a diagonal that goes up and another kind of a straight line and then another diagonal and then all in there that little ear and i'm i'm doing this under drawing and maybe even some under painting in these this color because that's that's the color of our cow for one thing and i always i like to use this as an under painting too uh color because of it, it produ produces such a nice golden-y hue that is, is coming out, peeking out of the painting. Now, I noticed that there's a little part of the cow's head right there, and then look at this shape, right? You knew I was going to say that if you've been with me the whole time. This is a very important little triangle there, right? Because that is helping you to draw the other shapes correctly. If we look at that negative, negative area. I'm just going to draw the top of his head kind of flat for now. Maybe this goes up a little bit more than I have it. Actually, I'm going to just kind of paint that in because that will help me see it better. And it's a little thick, I think, but that's okay because we'll go around it and kind of carve out the shape that we want when we do the background. Let's look into the second quadrant and this, the head kind of goes over a little bit and then the horns coming out. Did anybody know what kind of cow this was? Now we've got a question here from Marsha. Mm -hmm. Value is different shades of the same color, yes, and value, it's good to look at it in a one color study, like we are with the black and white. This is all the same color, right? We're looking at the different shades in there. But the trick is when you do a full color painting, you have to turn all of those values into all the colors you want to use. So that's where it gets tricky. If we were to paint this cow in a one color study, which I highly recommend if you want to do a practice, um, it helps you to understand getting the values correct. And then you just have to translate that to getting those values right in the other colors. So that's, it's, it's a little, um, it takes some, a little practice for sure. But that's a great question. And the, the easy answer is yes. Got another little triangle there, right? And then the back is kind of right at the bottom of that triangle. See how you use you use the other shapes or, and the lines to kind of draw the new ones. 
let's work on the face. I'm coming down now into this bottom left quadrant. And it kind of does go in a little bit there, doesn't it? Kind of just a little. And then come down, not quite to the, mid, the middle line. Let's work on this snout area. The middle of the nose, I guess, is, is a little off center. So maybe right about there. And then this, this shape is kind of like a half circle. I'm going to draw it a little more angular because I, I kind of like that when it looks boxy and angular. You can, rather than too curvy, but that's just personal preference. And then there's a little lip under here. Um, oh, okay, something I need to do right now, because this is easy to mess up, believe me, I've done it, is to get an idea of how long the head is and if it's long enough. So let's measure the nose, the length of the nose, and then see how many noses we can fit in the head. And you can fit two others, that's very interesting. So if I do that with mine, I want to be able to fit two and and it's it's pretty pretty good pretty good so good that's a good that's a good sign that you are you've got the drawing going well then there's this nice diagonal of the body and The sides of the face are different. We can see a little bit more on this one. So whereas this one's a little fatter, this one is um, kind of goes in a little bit more. Okay. Let's put some eyes on her. Uh, Look at where the eye is. It is right there with the ear. And we will definitely um, work on this area more. This isn't a final, oh, look, mine aren't, <laughs> mine aren't uh, in the right place. They're right on the, the edge here of the line. So I had that one a little too high. I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase it. And so you know what that means? That means, because I'm seeing the line, the eyes are sitting on that middle line, but it's also means that this needs to be right about there. There. Good. And There's a nice triangle part of the, the lid over the eyes. And so it kind of goes up and it comes out into a nice triangle. And it's also fun to put little eyelashes in there uh, because she's got some beautiful eyelashes. So we'll do that later. Let's make some lines on the face to help us. This, I'm looking, looking very hard, right? And you know what, if I look at the color version, I can see it better now that I'm looking at the color version, this shape. The black and white it is not as easy to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and just Lock that in. Good. 
kind of goes above the um, above the eye a little, just a little. And then while we're here, let's just block in this ear because that's really nice and dark. And you know what? I'm going to throw a little um, blue, a little ultramarine blue on there and combine it with my transparent red to make, this is a good, really dark substitute for black. Um, and I think that it would help in this area where it's, it's super dark. I don't want it too blue though. I, I really want it very browny. So a little bit more of the, the red. And then, and then I can, um, Put that in eye here too, because that's such a dark part there. Well, that's good. Yeah, that looks better. All right, um, back to the ear. There. See how it made a very nice brown. And if I was to add more blue, it, it would look blacker. And then I'm gonna. And Um, I used my transparent red oxide, which you might have a, a burnt sienna, with my ultramarine blue. And I used more of the burnt sienna than the blue. And what we're doing right now is, is we're drawing, but I'm, I'm kind of moving on to the next stage too a little bit in in blocking in some of this nice color with a watercolory feel layer. Let's do the same on the other side. want to refrain from getting too fussy. Isn't it tempting to want to paint those beautiful long cow, is it cow hair or cow fur? Uh. Yep, but, but not yet, I'm gonna hold back. And uh, yeah, I really like this brown color. I'm gonna to continue to kind of put that in a little bit more in these darker areas that I see. All right, let's go down here to, to the nose. And there, so there's a, um, I'm gonna switch and kind of go back to the more orangey color, not the brown, and uh, draw this, this front part of the nose in. And we take a lot of time on this part because it's really important in the foundation of your painting to get it right. And it's easy to change. If you don't like it or it's not in proportion, then this is the time to do that. You don't want to, you can do it later, but it's much easier to do it now. And then it gives you a nice framework for building the rest of your painting. So now I'll go back to um, my brown. And put these sides in. And the top there. Go back to a darker lip because that's underneath, right? So that's going to be darker. There's no, for sure, no sun down there. And then there's that little line that I'll definitely have to work on later, but 
kind of <clears throat> put it in there. It's bleeding right now, so it's not giving me a nice, nice line. Right, so we can see more of, um, we can see more of the, this side, like I said. So let's go over here with some yellow. And if you're making this very watercolory, it's it's really easy to, to paint over and then get this nice feel of these these bright colors peeking through. And we see, remember we see a lot more on this side. So the shape on this side is kind of look, it kind of goes like a triangle this way, doesn't it? Right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna block that in. Need a little more yellow. I'm using my Indian yellow. It's such a great transparent color. And when mixed with the little bit of the red oxide, it, it produces a nice goldeny orangey color. Kind of noticed that I needed a little bit more down here and uh, we'll come back to this area. I'm going to stay up here by the eye right now. And but there's a nice another, I mean we could think of it as another triangle kind of right around the eye. So you can draw that right in and Kind of color it in. And, and in a way, we're kind of doing a one color value study, aren't we? Um, on this under layer. Although we're using a little mixture of colors, but it's going to help us get where we want to go. A uh, little area up here. And then the, the, I'm looking at the color version and I see this nice shape here that's just all white right now. And they're, they're, it's going to be light, like we talked about in the beginning, but to help that light area feel lighter, it's nice to have a little underpainting that's a little darker because you can kind of see through to the, to the bottom where the darker areas are. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there. So that when I go back in later, it's going to help me to pop that, that color on top of it. And I, I'm not going all the way up into my other areas because I, I do want to leave that line. Uh, I mean, I do want to leave those lines to give myself a, a guide. So it looks a little funny right now, doesn't it? But... Um, and then back up to the horns. I'm going to mix up that um, that brown again from the transparent red oxide and ultramarine because I think that would look really great up here on the horns. Look at that. Yep. And um, continue that down. We've got a nice under even use a little bit more blue in this area nice nice darker under 
part of the horns. And then I'm just cleaning my brush and it's just got water in it right now so I can kind of soften it with what I've got already on there. I didn't put the nostrils in. Let's come back to that. All right, do I have enough up here? I, I think that I really want a lot of this underpainting to show on the final product here. So I'm, I'm making sure that I've got enough color on here to work with. I like that. I'm gonna step back for a minute and have a look. I recommend that you do too. That's nice. And we're looking at the big shapes, right? Big shapes. Let's move over to the body. And I'm gonna clean my brush and with a lot of water, just go into that nice warm yellow and let's just put that on there. I'm not gonna go up right up to the other line so that it'll help me still know where I'm going later. And then into that yellow, little of my transparent red oxide, just kind of painting a little wet and wet in here. But I really, I like that yellow in there. Um, you can see it in the color version really nicely. And so we can we use that hopefully peeking through in the final version. And then I'm gonna mix <clears throat> that darker brown again with the ultramarine and transparent oxide red and paint the bottom here. And there's a, let's see, goes up, up and over kind of. Let's look at these shapes of the muscles. I'm cleaning my brush and then I'll just go back into that pure yellow again and kind of come between a little bit. And I think I like what that yellow did over here and I want to put some more in the face and I will. I'd like it to be a little drier. So I'm going to um, put a little work on the nostril. <clears throat> Mixing up some more brown and uh, that's a nice little long triangle shape too, right? Right there. Can't really see it, so I'm going to put some more blue in. And it may be still wet in this area, so. Maybe I can put that lip. Oh, there it is. Oh, how cute. Aren't cows cute? You could just come in alive here. All right, that's a that's a good start. Um, that's a good start. So I'm gonna put my my um, palette down with those browns in it. I'm not gonna use those now um, because I'm gonna paint a more colorful cow. Um, than, than the brown. I think I'm going to use that magenta that I was telling you about that is the slow drying magenta as the, the darkest dark 
in there. And I like to paint those darkest dark areas first. But we, we, we have already put in kind of a lot of these dark areas here. So I'm going to be very tentative with my strokes with this dark area with the new color that I'm mixing up because I don't know how much I'm going to need of it. I don't know how much yet of this first layer will work peeking through. So I'm going to put a little of the quinacridone magenta on my palette and a little of white. And I'm going to also put a little of the, um, the red on there too. Because remember, if you were here when we did, um, oh boy, when would we do the, um, the, was it the chick or the pears for sure? Remember we used the cooler pink and the warmer pink together and that really looked nice together. And that's how you, you do that is by using the, the cool magenta and the warm red in different pinks in the same value. And that's kind of how you, you have a, an area, a large area that's all the same value. You can break it up with different colors. Um, same value, different colors, right? It could be any color, really. As you see, we're, we're making our, our pink cow. Um, so let's mix up a little of each. What might be a dark, good dark. And take it from there. Now. Okay, I'm just kind of looking at, looking at her. I think I'm gonna switch to my larger brush because I don't want to get too fussy, right? In the beginning, I want to paint as largely as I can and not worry about the details and go into this nice, cool magenta. And then I'm still looking at the, now I'm looking at the, the little shapes within each. The big shape here and there there's this really nice one right here right and I want to keep that nice brown in there so I'm again being very tentative with my marks I could always add more but I can never get back that beautiful first layer again All right, over to the other side. Mine's still a little wet, so it is blending a little bit with the brown, and, and that's okay. It's just dulling down the intensity or chroma of the color, and you certainly don't want a painting that's all very high intensity. You want some that's parts of it that are less intensive so that the one the colors that are really super bright, you know, or have something to balance out with. Uh, you know, I did not put those little tags in, but if you would like to, you can. 
And I just didn't even see them until now, honestly. But I know I've painted cows in my class at Chroma and my students have put those tags in and they looked really cute. And remember, this is the um, open, right? So these, these might uh, stay wet longer. And I'm going to pick up my little brush now and go into my warmer pink and uh, just put a little of that in there too. Maybe blend a little if I want. See how it's a um, different color, same value. We're, and this is going to be our darkest areas of the painting. So, so everything else will be lighter relative to this. And then down here, uh, yeah, I was gonna put that in, but you know, I'm glad I didn't because that's not really the darkest area. I'm gonna go back to my other brush and dip into my cool pink. Come down here, put a little, put all of that in. And uh, right in here, remember we said that was pretty dark as well, the area around the nose. I really don't, I really would like it to be um, dry because this is a pretty prominent area. Um, and I'm not sure that it would, if it would look better, you know, we got a little, it blended with the brown down here, but this might require more of a higher intensity color, but we could always paint over it, I guess, a little bit. So let's just go in here a little bit. And I know it, it feels weird putting pink on here when you're looking at the color version and it's, you know, it's clearly a blackish brown, you know, color. And you can certainly paint it that way. The warmer pink was just my naphthol red, which is more like a, you know, a true red and white. That's all. So I used the cooler shade down here. I'm going to I'm going to clean my brush and go up into the warmer shade on uh, top. And I really like some of that the way the brown is kind of um, pooled a little bit in some areas and, and made a nice um, happy accident, I guess. There. And let's see, underneath, underneath I'd like it to be cool. So, um, Back to the magenta and white down here, but not not all the way because there's this nice light part right there, and I don't want to lose this nice drip I've got going down there too. There we go, and then it kind of connects there that shape a little bit. I'm going to stand back and look. Good, good, good. I think that I'll keep the eyes brown. I think that will work. <clears throat> 
but while I have these two dark colors, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking where else can I put it, right? So underneath the eye over here is a very dark spot right there. And kind of over on this side is a little darker spot too. And I'm hoping that, that once I get into that area around it, that it's going to allow me to work into it a little bit so it's not such a hard spot with, with the, these um, golden open acrylics. Put a little, little schmutz up there. I don't want to get too fussy, but I want a little bit peeking through later. Okay, I think that's good. We can go into the middle value now. And that can be just simply a lighter, adding more white to these. But what I think I'm going to do too is add some yellow because I really like that golden look of the cow and I want to keep that feeling a little bit. So I'm going to put some yellow, both of my yellows out on the palette. There, there they are. And I'm going to switch to my big brush because I'm going to do big areas now. And, and another reason why I like to paint the darks and then, you know, keep uh, paint all the darks is because then you know that, okay, those colors that I mixed up for the darks, I'm not using those anywhere else in the painting. Those are for the darks. And sometimes I even get a different palette or clean off my palette with those darks to mix up totally new colors so that I don't, by mistake, pick one up and say, put it here, right? Because we don't want that to be the same as that. Oops, I, I see this needs a, I'm gonna have to get a better, uh, better technique here, I think, for attaching my canvas. Okay, so I'm gonna mix. Um, put a little more white into the magenta, and I'm gonna put some of the um, bright yellow. I'll just call it the bright yellow and the Indian yellow. And it makes kind of like a, a peachy color. Um, And put some, uh, I'm going to put the Indian into my, my red and white. Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty. Oh gosh, I hear that tape. That's really pretty, but it might be too dark. Put a little white in there. It's really a really nice orange. I could have dabbed that in the darks a little bit, but I won't. Okay, while you're mixing, I'm going to, um, I'm getting nervous. So I'm going to take a moment here. To do some housekeeping. And then I will be right back.
Next week I'm going with the uh, Gorilla Tape. my gloves back on. It's hard to put them back on once you've taken them off. But I don't want to be wasteful and get new gloves because they're in such high demand. Okay, good, back to work. I've got this peachy color and this more orangey. That's very pretty, let's test it. Uh, you know what? It's a lovely color, but it's too close in value, isn't it? So still more, more white. Maybe more yellow. We want to nail these values. That's some, that's a little better, I think. I'm working on getting both of the colors equally saturated. Same value, right? different colors, warm, cool. Okay, and then I'm looking, and remember we were gonna really kind of highlight the, um, or emphasize the lighter areas of the cow. So this is where we have to take a little creative license in. What we're doing, and you know what? That's still just a touch too, too dark. We're mixing, we're mixing. A little more water. I want this consistency to be um, opaque, you know, at this point, like that last version was, but not too globby. And just gently putting down some strokes. I, I want some of that nice yellow to peek through trying to kind of go the way of the lines of the cow a little bit. Um, I uh, put in this area, I see this, this is a kind of a triangle, right? And, and there's definitely no light over here. So I can Go over all this pretty yellow. I'm gonna use um, one brush for one color and the other for the other because it, it will, they will easily get intermingled and make one color. Is that right? You know what? It might go in a little bit more. Yeah. The shape goes in. Yeah. yeah. And So see, you've got the two colors, but the same value. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but I wanna emphasize how nicely they really work together in a large area that's the same value. And I don't wanna to get too fussy with all the lines. I mean, there's 
there's tons of them we could just continue to go but i'd rather simplify and just get the impression of what's going on with the back area uh okay that's enough there and I see that um, I'm going to have to come back in here with a darker value than this, right? Because you can't have this color just continuing up in here. It is, um, it's similar, but I think I should make this area a little darker. <clears throat> I can come over here. That's a good place to go now. And I'm looking at the shape of that, and there's kind of like a, rectangle-y kind of a shape that comes down there. It goes down into here a little. Yeah, I like that uh, warm shade over there. And then a little bit here. I'm going to um, use the switch colors and go into the cooler, the cooler pink on top. Connect it to that, and uh, remember how I was wondering if that was going to stay wet, and so um, just I, I don't have any paint on there, and I'm just going to kind of see what happens. Oh, look at that! Yep, it kind of can mix right in. It didn't dry. That's nice. Yeah. Good. Some lighter, lighter bits in there, but um, all right. Going back to the dark. Sometimes you do. You have to adjust. This is an adjustment. So we're going backwards with a back into the darker color. And painting this shape in. Uh, there's a lighter patch, kind of goes through there, right? Um, I'm going to wipe that out so that. There. And then there. Again, I'm going to clean my brush off and um, blot it out so I have a nice, clean ish, dry brush, and then See how that blends together a little bit. Don't do too much because it's you know you don't want to lose the separation of the colors, but okay. So I'm still looking for middle values, and um, I want to put middle values in the ears for sure. I'm going to go in light values here, 
light value there. Uh, this will this will need a middle middle value in these light white parts. <clears throat> And a little bit, I guess we've got a little bit of a middle value there. So, and then light, light all over here. Let's, let's do that area. What color should that be? I'm, I'm not sure about that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, um, I'm going to put in a yellow there. A transparent yellow so I'm kind of even going back I'm going backwards again to the first stage where I did a very watercolory wash of my yellow just to get rid of the white right here because since I'm not sure which way to go let's just get rid of the white and that will help and, and when you don't know what to do in an area, it's best to move on and do another section because that'll help you figure it out. And I really like that yellow in there right now. Um, so that was a good decision. Now we're going to do the background. And the reason for that is because I don't want to put the finishing touches on my cow or the you know, all these long hairs, and then have to paint all around them. And then I'm going to use this opportunity to really carve out my nice cow shape. So new palette. I'm going to get rid of that one. Clean off my brushes. And in fact, I'm going to get clean water because we're going to be going into some cooler shades now, which will be a really nice complement to all the warmth that we have going on here. Get a new palette and squirt out some blues and yellows. I, I'm going to go with my ultramarine blue for the sky. Ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue and white. nice sky color often very simple <clears throat> and if we we paint it in um, we, we can always go back over it with a few little 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 splotches of another shade of blue to make it a little interesting. But I'm just going to mix up white and not too much blue. Just get it like on the corner of your, your brush there and mix it around. Because this is a very light area of the painting too, right? Look at the black and white. It's, it's almost, you know, the lightest light. Let's see how it looks. A very soft blue. You almost can't see it, right? Um, but I, I kind of like it. And see, I had this mistake over here. Oops. Covered it right up. I, I didn't think it would. I thought we would have to go back and let it dry and then come back in over it. But it covered it. And so now you want to pay a little closer attention to those horn shapes. And I've got pink coming out of my brush, so I'm washing it a little bit better. You know what I need is some more paper towels to really wipe that paint out. Okay, so back to my color and Carefully, I love it. Yep, yeah, that is such a nicer shape than you would get by painting it alone, right? It's to paint with the background around it. I'm gonna have it kind of stick in a little there. And 
we have a lot of fun little stuff going on up there that we'll get to later. is coming out. I thought I got rid of it, but I didn't. Oh, you know why? Because it was that slow drying magenta. So it stayed wet and now it's making purple over here, which is pretty. So we're going to go with it. Uh, let's look at this ear shape. Right down, kind of around, and then see how I'm painting over some of that cow back, um, back because it was just a little too high, I think. On this side. <clears throat> That's kind of a nice little happy accident there. I can, if I was being strict, I, I would paint right over it, but I kind of like it, the um, little rough quality there that it adds to the painting, so I'm going to leave it just to see if it works. I could always paint over it later, and I'm going to paint in this nice triangle right there, and this nice triangle over here, I'm using the, the, the edge, very tip of my brush. So I like these flat brushes, very versatile in painting large surfaces when you use it this way or more delicate areas when you just use the tip. And I always like to kind of get into the subject with the background a little bit too. All right, I'm going around. I have to be careful though, because remember what happened with the um, magenta, so. And then this, okay, I see something we need to fix here. Um, it goes up like that a little bit more than I had it. Yeah. And I'm just going to kind of feather it down a little bit because um, we know we've got some greenery in there to do. And I recommend painting your sides as well. I'm going to Put a little bit more blue in there, a little bit darker value, and throw a little of that down here because that's going to be peeking through the green a little bit. I want it to be a little darker. In fact, I'd love to really hurry up here and get that green and work a little wet to wet in that so I'm going to squirt out quickly some of my phthalo green and yellow both yellows because you never know a little bit of both um, and I want to mix up kind of a olivey green first so that would be and I'm going to work right in, in my mixture that I've already got going. Phthalo, that's certainly not olivey. A little bit of yellow and then the secret ingredient, a little red or magenta in there to 
give it that nice olive -y look. Now you might have to continue like me. That's a very cool, still very cool, and I want it to be warm, so I'm gonna keep mixing. Now I'll put a little Indian yellow in there, that'll warm it up, and then a little bit more of my red. A little bit more green. Mix, mix, mix. And let's test it. Hmm. It's not bad. I think I'd like it just a little darker though. Because this, this isn't going to be the final layer. This is going to be like the underneath part of, of the greenery. Greens are hard to mix, but <laughs> that looks the same thing. I'm losing my window, aren't I? I'm going to wipe off my brush a little bit because it's all gloppy from painting. And uh, still not quite happy yet. It's not the warm green that I want yet. So I'm going to keep mixing. Put a little bit more of that red in there and a little bit more green, a little bit more yellow. Hmm. It's kind of very, uh, very neutral color, isn't it? Like a gray, gray green. All right, I'm going to do Plan B here. Plan B is clean my brush off. I'm not happy and remember you just you just can't continue unless you're happy with your color so I'm gonna go into my old palette here that I started on when we first started to draw um, and put some green just some nice transparent green in there and and do a watercolory wash so I've got lots of lots of water Maybe a little bit of yellow in there. And, and it's okay if it mixes with my brown in there. So maybe that would be very helpful, really. And then I'm gonna go into this with just a little wash. Maybe that's what it needs first. And we'll, then we'll paint on top of that. It's very transparent. I'm not covering up anything. In fact, look, I could even go right over what I've already got on there. And uh, it doesn't cover it up. All right. So now, while that's still wet, I'm going to see if I can work a little bit of the blue. 
That's too blue. More white. The blue background kind of cut peeking through. While this is still really kind of able to be mixed. And I'd like to get a, a, a little softer edge here with what's going on. Actually that Oops. I kind of is starting to have a little of the, the feel of what's going on up here where we're just kind of implying a nice background. We know there's some greenery going on. And uh, now I'll take this awful mixture that I had of the green that was not working, and I'm gonna throw a bunch of, where, that. I'm gonna throw a bunch of yellow in there and really brighten it up. And it'll make a pretty, pretty lemony green a little more white in there, lots of, lots of yellow. And um, now I'm gonna paint in here with this yellow, kind of, while this is still wet, you get a nice blending. I don't wanna lose all that green that I put in but um, I want to put in some of this lighter color around it. Hmm. I'm not sure if, uh, I think I do want to get a little darker down here. So I'm gonna have to keep mixing. So what I, I, I did was I just used Indian yellow and phthalo green. And uh, yeah, it's just not natural, not natural looking. I'm gonna put a little of the red oxide, the brown color in it. We'll see if that'll help. Where I was using the reds before, the reds weren't doing it for me. So now I, I'm using the brown, mixing that in a little bit. Right here. That's a little better. Yeah, I think it needed that dark bottom here. Very similar to the painting. And this is opaque, so I can kind of carve out a little bit, right, what's going on. And hopefully I can blend it a little with what I've got here already. I'm cleaning my brush and going back into that lighter green. And I don't want this to be a too much of a, an area that will um, draw your eye. So I don't want it to be too many shapes or too many changes in value. And I want it to be real subtle down here so, be, so that, you know, she's the star. And that we don't really look at the background and go, well, you know, and, and have your eye drawn to that. There. Yeah, I like that. 
I think that's good enough for now. Uh, okay, next is let's do some lighter colors. And now it's really going to get fun. Uh, new palette and white. And back to my pinks and, and yellows and warm, warm colors. I know, I want to work on that nose a little bit. First. And, and that is just going to be a beautiful, light, light pink. So I've got my white, white and I'm going to use the red to make a very light pink. Remember, this is our, um, you know, this is our one of our lightest colors. So not a lot of color in there. Just a hint, a hint of pink. Let's see if it works. Maybe a touch more. Yeah. And I, I love the yellow peeking out. Don't lose that. Comes all the way down. Now we can kind of help that little, help the mouth show a little more. We'll have to go in and put in those nostrils a little more as well. But that's pretty. Yeah. And um, I'm going to kind of continue with this color. There's a nice highlight right around the nose. I'm using the side of my brush to get a nice line. This is where a nice sharp brush comes in handy. Nice. Yeah. And then remember we've got this lighter area coming down here. I was seeing if I could save any of that, but it really needs that shape in there. Um, we'll come back to that. Stick a few darks in there that we lost, that I lost. And then this is gonna really be nice to nice side now that messed up this area so again remember how I said that when we did that first um, dark dark I was tentatively putting it in right so now after we do this I'll have to go back in again and go over this with that dark to, to um, define that a little more And then this kind of goes up there. I want a, an indication of something going on there with the fur. I want to make this a, a, a yellow under here. I see a yellow. So I'm not going to go under here just yet. And I think that I also want to... Um, so make this a little bit more of a yellowy pink in here. 
but I'm looking for places now that I can use this pink that I've mixed up. And uh, there's some light kind of shining around the ears. Let's put that in. Now you know I didn't get so fussy on the ears because there's much more work to be done on them. Just going to go right off the canvas there. And, uh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to mix a little yellow into that now so I get kind of a peachy color. Add a little more white because I really want it to be a light, light, light color. It's almost like a flesh kind of a color. Um, my flesh, I'm pretty, pretty light. There. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep those bits peeking through, but I want to keep my options open, so I'm being tentative with my strokes. I'm gonna make that nice triangle over the eyes and the, it covers the eye a little bit. So the eye isn't gonna be perfectly round. You're gonna cut it a little and then just kind of let it go right off. And then this one too is just cut just a little bit with that eyelash going off in that triangle shape over the eye, the eyelid. There's a um, white-ish light there and there. I think I want to go, um, I'll just put a, a little, a few, few little marks in here, but I really want to go back to that other pink. So it's just the white with the, um, the red, not the yellow. In this area, maybe a little bit darker. There. I'm trying to stand way back when I paint to kind of get a good view of what's going on.
stand back. Well, that's just a little too busy. So, um, you paint right over it. Now I need a, a white with, I'm going to mix up white with uh, Indian yellow. And see how I can work that in. So I have, I have three now. I have the white with the pink, the white with the red and the yellow, and then the white with the yellow only. I'm not sure. Remember, we have to we have to do this area. That's very bright. Um, very light. I wonder if the peachy look better there. That's light too. Sure. What I do know is that I want to make the these brighter. So I'm I'm gonna still keep that pink kind of peeking through, but this is gonna be more of a golden highlight coming off here. There. there. I really like that defined eye eyelid on the cow. Let's go up and um, put a little highlight on the horns with the yellow. I'm losing that great line I had there, aren't I? But we definitely need to highlight down here. And hopefully it'll pop a little bit because the background is like a, a light blue and this is a light yellow and so they should stand out differently enough. I think I'm going to try this around 
here too. Yep. Maybe, I'm gonna get my big brush. Maybe the back needs, just needs some pink on it, just like we had here. A little, a little gloppy. Too pink there. Okay. I know that I'm not quite done, but I want to, um, you know, we're at the final finishing touches here, so you're going back and forth between your, all your values a little bit to, um, to make it right at this point. So I'm going to go back to my, my dark again, and uh, so remember my dark plate where I had the magenta and white, and then I had the, the uh, naphthol red or the you know, truer red and white with yellow in it. So this one has the red and yellow, and this has the magenta and yellow for our darks. And then that way I can make some of these shapes a little bit better. There, that's better. And this one, you're looking, you're looking. Uh, if you could see me, I'm, I'm looking more than I'm painting. I'm, looking at the photo and then making adjustments. Come back into that a little bit with the middle, middle value. Yeah. 
think I need to lose that light in there. There's really not a light, is there? There. And then there's a, a little shape right there that I, I wanna, maybe I'll use like that orange right there to help, help define. You have to have so much patience Um, when painting because it just doesn't look good all the time and um, you have to trust your process that you'll get there all right and I you're probably wondering when I'm gonna go back into my ears if at all, and I, I certainly am. I'm gonna put a little bit of the dark color in there and then go over it with the, the middle value as well. And we've got, now is the time that we can start with the little wispy strokes. So I need to get, what color, what color? I'm liking that orangey color. So I'm, I'm gonna mix up the um, white and a true red and yellow. Maybe the Indian yellow. And this is a this this is a really nice middle value. I don't want any white of the canvas peeking through for sure. Still have to come down here with that light. Oh yeah, we're gonna go over here with the, that nice shape. It's kind of the neck of the cow. Huh. It kind of comes in a little. Mm hmm. And um, remember, no, no white. Peeking through there. Okay, ears. I want to be careful. I'm just kind of giving the impression of what's going on here with these fluffy ears.
This will be a fun stroke. Woo! Right down. Didn't do them on this side as much, did I? There, that's nice. Breaks down up that shape a little bit. And, uh, yeah. That's up in here. Now, I don't think that worked really great. Um, okay, uh, a little bit lighter value I need. So into that nice orange, I'm gonna put some white and more yellow. And so I get like a lighter peachy color. And actually, I use that there. Because this is not really as light as I have it. I need a little dark under there. See, I didn't cover that up. I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't cover it up until now when I was certain that I could that it wasn't right. I don't know if that that's kind of drawing my eye a little that that shape. Yeah, yeah, that needs to be a little darker. It's not light under his eye or her eye. There. Really
Yeah. Okay. It's coming along. It's coming. A little bit of a yellowy, a light yellowy color. Peachy. Under here. Not yellowy enough. No, that wasn't a good mark. There. And back to the um, magenta and white. what happens when the color is not mixed all together on the brush. And I'm going to kind of just do a little flick there to get some of that whiskers kind of thing going. Flick. <laughs> get some whiskers down here too. Oh, okay. Back to the nostrils, right? We, we used the brown for that, so let's go back to the, and use that. So I'm, I'm using blue and brown with just a little water and uh, want to get a good nostril shape. Might as well. Fix that while I'm at it. Nope. Too much. Well, that's not working for me in that color. 
and yellow anymore. Yeah, that's better. And uh, let me put a little bit of a lighter yellow over the nose where I did it in pink at first. It's not really standing out as much as I want. So white and yellow and then um, make it really be one of the lightest lights here. Because I think that's an important shape. It's definitely, if you just saw that part, you kind of would know it's a cow. And I think I like half of it in pink there. That's kind of cool. Um, half in pink and half in the light yellow and back down here. Yes? It was. It was painting wet in wet. And uh, I did the wash, remember the transparent green wash down here, and then went over it with some um, opaque colors that I was able to blend in. And I think that I would just, doing some final touches, just kind of put a little, couple of little dots in there of, of, of color. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a totally different than how the rest of the cow was, was Handled, isn't it? So I allow myself to get a little fussy at this stage. I still need to do highlights in the ears and up here and um, that little white part up there is probably I just need to, I, mean, I don't want it to look too contrived so um, because I've, I've done those parts before and they're, they're just cute as can be, but they're, they kind of stick out um, quite a bit. So let's just put in some, some light. And, and I'm going to get rid of those little peachy bits there because I don't like those. But... I want to be really careful with how I put in this light here. I'm, I'm always looking at the shapes and not necessarily the, yeah, I know it's, I know it's little stringy bits, but I don't want to paint it that way. This isn't an area that, that should be too fussy. That's probably quite enough. And then I'm gonna go back into the peach, I mean the pink, um, and, and cover over these a little bit.
Sorry. Okay. Change in the color a little bit. I didn't do much up there on the uh, horns. And they're, um, they're probably okay. The one area that I think needs some um, brightness are, is the ears still. So let's um, go to my big brush. And I'm going to just do a yellow and white mixture ah. more yellow okay Remember, try not to get too fussy. Yes, that is what you do. Um, just so it white again, and if you do that, you could even start with the um, transparent washes right over that, so you you get you know that kind of look peeking through. Um, you can't, you can never get back to that if you're painting over opaque paint. So you do have to. In fact, there have been many paintings that I've done and I've just gessoed over the whole thing and started again. So that's definitely the thing to do. So I, now I... Yeah. Yeah, you have to start with the uh, first layer all over again. If you want it to have the same kind of a look, right? Um, so you go back to the, that first locking in stage with the watercolor, um, watercolor feel, you know, to the, to the painting. So this yellow is adding some really nice highlights in the painting. And, and I, I, I don't want to get too fussy. I think that was too fussy. Um, but I like what it did for the ears, and um, I'm almost, I almost really want to stop because, you know, you don't want to overpaint, and uh, let me just do a little more. Uh, Get that yellow kind of a glow over there a little bit. Oh, 
I'm so glad I went into this yellow. I think it added a lot. And I'm still not happy really with this little that little area there. Maybe maybe I should do that in yellow. Let's let's try. So I've already painted over it a couple times. Now I know that when I'm done here, I'm gonna look back after lunch or something and see different things that I wanna tweak. And that's okay, I, I usually don't do a painting all at once and call it a day. I, I like to take a little break and come back and fret with fresh eyes, even if it's overnight and, and and see how it looks to you. There have been times when I've gone to bed thinking that it's, I had the worst painting in the world and um, the next day looked really good. All right, I'm gonna almost, ah, I was gonna call it a day, but then I wanted to go back up in here last minute. Very colorful. Need a straight line right there. Okay, I'm gonna call her a day.